best way to progress in calisthenics if you are stuck. Hello, my name is Alexander and for the past three years I've been doing calisthenics and just improving very quickly doing muscle ups, front lever and uh, I think it was a uh, straddle planche, yes, straddle planche. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff and all my goals just came at once, flowing into it. And I want to share with you a couple of things you can do about it. Now, the first year of me exercising wasn't the greatest, of course. I was, uh, like many people, wasn't, uh, was, uh, like many people, wasn't, uh, I didn't really know what to do. I wasn't watching any type of videos. I only knew what types of push-ups there were. So I did every day 300 push-ups every single day. And it's probably unbelievable. I think I started off with 290 push-ups. Still, I'll just round it off to a 300 a day. In total, thousands of push-ups in my first year, you could say that is bad. Yeah, because I'm missing out on the pulling motion, the squat, legs, all that type of stuff. That's, that's not good. And I want to show you how I can waste less time, get the knowledge faster and waste us. Now, what's the pros and cons of calisthenics? The pros of calisthenics is you can do it anywhere, whenever, wherever. Whenever you want, you can do a push-up or squats, body weight, everything. But the con is the progressions. It's not as easy as putting a bit more weight on your bench press. It's not like you're gonna grab a heavier dumbbell, easier dumbbell, or whatever. It's, you need to know what progression. Now, then we come to humility. You having humility is very important. You watching this video is you having humility. And you should be proud of that. You're willing to learn something new. Okay, you know push-ups, pull-ups, squats, dips, dips. But maybe you don't know everything. You can always learn something new. By having a bit of humility, you'll learn more. A lot of people, they, they just do not have enough humility to learn from someone in a particular movement or a particular exercise. Now, how much rest should you have every week? In a week, I have found the sweet spot. I have around two rest days, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, if you want, you can use my own uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Minimum one, maximum three. I'd even say three is a bit overkill. I'd only say that if you're training like David Goggins, which is very rare. <laughs> I do not believe you're fucking training like David Goggins. All right. And you should have variation in your push ups and pull ups. In the week, I'm not saying do once push ups or push. I'm not saying once a week do pull. I'm saying do full body, but with a different type. So push-ups, there's a lot of different ways you can do it so that it's not boring. You can do normal push-ups, five push-up, diamond push-up, uh, fist push-up, finger push-up, sphinx push-up, Russian push-up, uh, archer push-up, and uh, you know, you get it, right? 
you can choose a couple and in those five days you can do a different type every time and over time period you'll get less bored now and then you've got pull-ups what can you do for pull-ups pull-ups chin-ups else pull-ups um holds swings with elastic band pull-ups uh oh wait wait i'm thinking what else can you Uh, <laughs> okay, we've covered chin-ups, pull-ups, I'll sit, and yeah, dead hangs, swings, yeah, something like that. For pull-ups, I'm a bit like, yeah, you just pull, or you can do a light pull-down, but we're talking specifically about calisthenics, motherfucker, he's not funny, man, okay? So... We can do the same with squats as well. You can do pistol squat, Bulgarian squat, uh, lunges, Nordics, um, I'm stuck again. Uh, hip thrust. And all those things you can implement them in your workout instead of having a boring workout, including pull up, push up, uh, squat, abs or some shit. And that's literally every freaking day for five days straight. You know how quickly someone can get bored? Way too quickly. So that's why having variation in your exercises is very important. Now, another thing to point out is plyometrics. Those come extremely handy when you are doing explosive movements, when you're comfortable in your body's capabilities, is when you can implement plyometrics very well, which means you're calm in your body, but you can instantly react when there's a threat and you don't have to be in your fight or flight 24-7 which decreases anxiety. Yeah. Plyometrics can be like explosive push-ups, pushing your whole body off the ground and coming back. You can also say clap push-ups. That's also explosive. Then squats, squatting down, jumping up and coming down. Or you can box jump or on your knees and then jump up from your knees and then on the box. That's another explosive movement. Next, we got pull-ups. You can just pull yourself up and clap or do lachets, and that's you swinging from one bar to another. Very underrated exercise, which a lot of people just don't do anymore. Dips, when you're doing on the dip bars, just push up very hard so that you kind of like jump and then you catch the bar again. Or you just swing on the dip bars and you go forward. Because most of the time, dip bars are like long in the calisthenics park and stuff. You'll see in my um, clips that I've got that it's pretty long and you can just jump, jump, jump. And that really trains the triceps. You can also do, if you need any tricep workout, you do Sphinx push-ups, Russian push-ups, and um, Russian dips, which is just, you've got the dip bar, you go like this, you go this up, huh, 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 boom. Simple as that. Next, static holds. You can do before any workout static holds, which includes handstands, L-sits, plank, planche, um, dead hang, anything where you have to hold for a long period of time and especially those are the easiest to progress in you just add one more second nothing else it's that simple so yeah static holds are so good but extremely underrated a lot of people don't do it they just don't they're like 
I do not like doing the plank. Bitch, do the damn plank. Do those things before you begin your workout. Also, if you're uh, if you're training abs, first thing you do before you tr start any workout should be abs. First thing, not as last, not in the middle. Okay. Now we've got that on the side. Uh, progressions for muscle up. You can use a rubber band to train the motion. You train the motion. Uh, what can you also do? You can do negatives of literally every exercise. You can do negatives for the pull-ups. If you're training one arm pull-up, you can do one arm negative pull-ups and you can do negative muscle-ups. Uh, straight bar dips to train the top part. Then leg raises to train the momentum which is the movement part which you will learn faster if you use a rubber band to get you up there with a bit more help and aid rubber band can be used with everything even the push-up if you have a um, pull-up bar just attach it like normal and you just pull it down to your waist and then you do your push-ups you can even train the planche with it you can do dips you can do, I don't think you can do squats. Maybe someone has a way to do squats with rubber band, but it might seem a bit stupid. Yeah, no. For the rest, you've got then, um, for muscle up. E jumping muscle ups you jump into the movement so like the bars here you jump into movement and you go and then you go and you do the negative as well which improves the muscle up even more you know what's funny i've done a muscle up in every climate it's snowed in belgium so i've done a muscle up in the snow I've done a muscle up when it was raining i've done a muscle up when it was summer and in every uh, season so winter summer um what are what else is there oh, fuck, i forgot whatever okay uh next thing the front lever if you're practicing the front lever you can practice it with your legs bent and for easier training the actual movement you can train the plank and the planche which is just the front lever on the ground just keep it in mind eh? don't knock it until you try it of course uh for the rest you can use rubber band for the front lever and yep yeah. running a lot of people hate running i love it david goggins loves it stay hard okay that has nothing to do with the video <laughs> uh so running what can it help you well it can increase your gains how you might ask well by running it increases your vo2 max which is how efficiently you use oxygen the more efficiently you use oxygen the more you can supply your muscles with sufficient oxygen and do a damn muscle up or pull up or whatever it is. I have seen immense gain. It is helping me achieve my goals quicker by having more stamina to perform those things. Sometimes you do a lot of pull ups and then you're actually exhausted. When I do running and beep test which i'll get in later everything becomes easier i can do everything more control manner and then also if you do any exercise especially running in the cold breathe in through the nose breathe out through the mouth you know why because when you breathe through the nose you use the air already way more efficiently than uh, breathing through the mouth. 
So that's one way you can increase your VO2 max by like 40%. And get that jawline, my guy. Yeah. And then we got friends and gym bros. You should have friends to go and exercise with. Or some people call them gym bros. Me and my friends go to the calisthenics park and we hit a fire ass workout because we hold each other accountable. I always invite and be like, hey, you want to come to the calisthenics park at Wednesday or some shit? And they're like, yeah, sure. Why not? When they don't come, they feel accountable. They're like, shit, why didn't I go? I feel like fucking shit. Why am I such a dumbass? And that means next time they are going to come. So. And they push you to be better, to push you harder. You'll push yourself harder and you'll push your friends to be harder. That sounds weird. You push your friends and you push, they push you to get more progression. Another thing, training grip. If you do not train your grip in calisthenics, there's a lot of movements you can't perform. And the ways you can train it is of course with a grip trainer, but grip trainers train your forearm, okay? But you're missing one more thing, your hands. This is a muscle, this is a muscle, and this is a muscle. So you need to find another way to train those muscles in your hand. Easiest way is to do dead hangs, swinging hangs, like extreme swinging, like the gymnast when they swing around the bar, you should train your goal to be swinging around the bar, which is what I'm doing right now. And I have seen my grip improve by a lot. Okay. Most of the time, if you can do like 10 pull-ups, you've, your grip strength is pretty much, uh, your body weight. My body weight is 56 kg and my grip strength is around 60. But me implementing these grip strengthening exercises, I gained more strength. I almost can close 200 pounds, which is 90 kg. Put that in comparison. 65 kg body weight with a 90 kg grip. Yeah, you should invest into uh, grippers and grip strengtheners. There's so many things you can do for grip. And if you have a gym bro, you can do arm wrestling because arm wrestling is the single bestest thing for grip. Now, the next thing is the reason I love running was, like I said a bit earlier, the beep test. It's a test, a 20 meter test where in America they call it the fitness um grading test or some shit and you run from one side to another every time it beeps you run from one side to another and it's 20 meters my record first time i've ever done it in my life 12 minutes and 30. second time i did it 13 minutes and there's gonna come a tournament friday this week and uh, the record is 15 world record is 17 minutes no matter what, I will beat every single one of them. And I promise that to the viewers. And I've promised that to my friends as well. That inner uh, David Goggins. Bro, if you do not run extremely long, just lactic acid, when you breathe, it's burning. Then you will never understand David Goggins. Where it comes from. I did it. I did the 12 minutes and 30 and then I understood. That's where David Goggins comes from. It's all in here, man.
You can do anything, but it's just mental. If you're mentally tough enough, you can do anything. With all that be said, thank you for watching this video. It is thank you for watching this video. Be grateful for everything, even the smallest things, because you never know what will happen. Be grateful for the next day. Next day, new opportunity. Pray to God that you're getting a new opportunity to go hit those goals.